What are the market ingredients for a culturally sensitive country like India? Mm. Would there be anything that is you, you will do different here? Um, every country is slightly different. Many countries have language issues. Local language versus English or other, you know, internationally spoken languages. There's issues with privacy. For example, in Japan, until very, very recently, people were unwilling to use their real photographs, and in some cases, even unwilling to use their real name in social networking sites. So what would happen is people would use, you know, like a fake image of uh, of a cartoon character or a cat or something to represent them in social networking sites. Um, that was a cultural thing. Now that's changing and now more and more people are using their real photographs and their real names, but you know, you have to sort of be sensitive to what does that mean. In the Netherlands, for example, there's a local language social networking site called Hives, H-Y-V-E-S, which is very popular, much more popular than Facebook and Twitter and, and, and the other ones all combined. It's, it's got a huge percentage of the population. So as a marketer, you need to be sensitive if you want to do business in the Netherlands that you need to f know what Hives is and how it works. We have been talking about organizations, branding, and marketing for organizations. What about individu individual branding? I mean, how do you market yourself? How do you sell yourself? Um, it's the same ways, you know. I mean, um, many there there's a there's a recession a global recession on right now it's business is tough for a lot of companies and business is tough as well for individuals M many of the people I know are losing their jobs they're in their 40s 30s some of the people are even in their 50s and 60s and the companies are downsizing downsizing and letting them go the people who find a job very quickly are the ones who've developed a personal brand online they blog or create videos or do YouTube or whatever it is. They have a personal brand online or they're on LinkedIn or Facebook. And then when they're looking for another job, they tap their personal network using their personal brand online and they can find a job much easier than somebody who hasn't focused on those things. And what ends up with them is they oh my god, you know, how am I going to find a new job, you know, maybe I have to look in the newspaper, you know, whatever it is. It's really hard. So I think that developing a personal brand online is important for most people to do. Maybe not everybody, but most people ought to be doing it. And the time is now, before you need to find a new job or, or whatever. Uh, there are many ways in which uh, social media is being used inside India. It is even uh, used to promote transparency inside elections. We have Indian uh, ministers, a few of them, tweeting online as yeah. uh, sometimes they land into trouble. So what advice will you give to people who are in high influential posts and yeah. maintain an image online and are finding it difficult? Uh, first of all, remember everything you put out there can be seen can be found forever. <laughs> so anything you put out, I could find 10 years from now. Uh, second thing is be yourself. You, you, the best way to be successful using these tools is to, is to just be yourself and, and behave in the way that you normally would. And um, if you're normally a very, very shy person, uh, well, probably you're not. A, you're not a politician, <laughs> but if you're normally a shy person, um, then probably you um, will want to um, think about what does that mean for social networking, and maybe it's not going to be the best thing for me. And so, I don't think you can hide for long your true personality. And so, um, I would say. That's important. And the, the final thing I think is important is that the organization that you work for should have some set of formal published guidelines. And so, for example, when I met with um, uh, John Suffolk, who's the chief information officer of the United Kingdom, he told me that they have social networking guides for people who work within the UK government, um, and it also includes politicians 
um, who are uh, members of parliament and whatnot, and they need to abide by those rules. So that set of those sets of guidelines help people to be able to engage in a way that um, you know that doesn't get them in trouble and you know is appropriate for the sort of organization that they work with. One last question: yeah. How was your experience at NASCAR? Oh, and this is an um, interesting and dynamic group. I, I wasn't sure what to make of my keynote session. I knew. You made huge fun of biting dusty, and people enjoyed it. So. Well, I knew, I knew that people like you who are engaged, I knew I was going to connect to. You know, we did the tweet up, and I met people from the very first day who are into Twitter. I, I actually connected with a lot of people before I even came. Dozens of people. Because you know they knew I was coming, we tweeted, and it, it was great. So I knew I wasn't going to have any any issues with people who are active in social networking and social media, but I wasn't so sure about the big group in the main hall. I wasn't so sure about the CEOs and the directors and the bosses. But I'm I'm very comfortable that I was able to to break through and at least give them an idea that there are different ways to market, at least give them an idea that the ways that technology companies have been marketing in the past may not be the only way. I'm particularly glad that people were engaged when I was talking about what I call gobbledygook language, you know, those words like innovative and cutting edge and mission critical that so many technology companies seem to use. So people seem to appreciate that maybe that's not the best way to, to get through. So I had a great experience in, in India and at NASCOM. Hope you were successful in transforming how marketing is done in IT. Thank you very much. Thank you.